وسلم. Our next speaker will be Sheikh Muhammad Masoom Naqshbandi. Sheikh Muhammad Masoom Naqshbandi is a scholar, teacher, and spiritual guide of the Naqshbandi order, starting his primary education in Biara in northern Iraq. He moved to Mahabad in Kurdistan of Iraq. He there completed his Islamic education. Later on, he was awarded recognition as Mudarris Dini uh, Shahada um, by the Ministry of Awqaf, Iraq. Sheikh Ma'asum's forefathers were all from the Naqshbandi order, which they acquired from Shah Abdullah Dehlavi. They held positions of high esteem and attainment in the order. The Sheikh has dedicated his life for the cause of Islamic teaching and spiritual guidance. Uh, by the way, if you're interested in seeing the Sheikh's silsila, please consult last year's uh, proceedings. Uh, also, much of the silsila is included in Sheikh Hisham Kabani's book, um, The uh, Naqshbandi uh, Sufi Way. I'm forgetting the title. Um, this is the Khalidiya part of the Silsila. And if you read Persian, uh, you can read a book by Tavakuli on Tasawuf da Kurdistan to get the rest of the, the story uh, part of the way. In any case, uh, Sheikh Masum will now read his, uh, give his talk in Persian, and then I will uh, read a translation uh, بعشق علاقي ومحبتي قلبي كأز عموم برادران وحزار مجلسك أز دور نزديق من يحساس كردام راه دور رابع بمنزور ديدار بيني ومحبتي قلبي ونور إيماني كدر قلب عموم مشاهدة كردام من إن راه دور بائن مريزي قبول كردمو برأي تجديد ديدار دعاء خير إن شاء الله كشامل حال عموم باشد من هيش وقت برادران ديني را أزدور ونزديك بدعاء خير فراموش نمي كنم وأميدوارم إن شاء الله مقبول درقاه إلهي قرار بجيرد وشمارا ب وما وشمارا براه راست هدايتي مستقيم راه طريق مستقيم هدايت بفرمايات بجاه النبي سيدنا محمد وآله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الغني الكريم الذي شرح صدور العلماء عاملين بسلوك المنهاج المستقيم ونور بهم سبل الفلاح والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد خاتم الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين أحمده على نعمه التي لا نهاية لحدها وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى إخوانه النبيين وآل كل وسائر الصالحين حمد سباس خداوند كبما وسائر حزار مجلس عناية وتوفيق فرمود كبار دقر مراسمي باشكوه جشن ولادته حضرت خاتم الانبیاء محمد المصطفى را انجام دهیم امیدوارم از برکات و نوری تا بنده محمدی همه وقت در دنیا و آخرت عموما بهرور و مستفید باشیم چون لطف الهی در باره طالبان راه حق و حقیقت دائما جل و است حدیث قدسی که خداوند به آن حضرت فرموده 
لولاك لولاك لما خلقت الافلاك اگر بخاطر وجود پر برکت تو نمی بود من آسمان ها و آن چی در آن هاست نمی آفریدم یکی از شعرا در تمجید و محبوبیت و مقربی آن حضرت در بارگاه الهی گفته نماند بعیسیان کسی در گرو که دارد چنین سیدی پیش رو علا هذا انشاء الله قدم گزاران و زحمت کشان این جشن و مراسم هر یک فراخور حال و عشق و علاقه که دارد اجر و پاداششان محفوظ می باشد عزیزان ارجمند بزرگترترین هدیه که خداوند به حضرت محمد المصطفی صلی الله علیه و سلم عطا فرموده قرآن است که معجزه مستمر و دائمی است و در دسترس عموم می باشد تلاوت و تفکر در عبارات این هدیه نجات و عمل به آن که مهمترین است بایستی کاملا جدی در نظر گرفته شود در تلاوت قرآن حتی الامکان باید سعی تمام و درست در تلفظ به حروف و کلمات و عبارات آن باشد چون اعجازش در ترکیب کلمات و جمله بندی هایش می باشد دوم معانی کلمات و جمله هایش و سوم عمل کردن به آن که بسیار مهم است چون تنها تلفظ به حروف و فهم معانی کافی نیست بلکه باید دستورات و اوامر و مناهی آن را اجرا نمود آن چی بسیار مهم است اول توحید دوم معاد و سوم رسالت می باشد توحید یعنی اعتقاد و ازعان قلبی به این که هیچ معبود به حق نیست و کسی را با ذات و صفات و افعال خداوند واحد قرار ندهی در کلیه شعون کائنات معنی کلمه لا اله الا الله این است لو کان فیه ما آلهت الا الله لفسدتا اگر در زمین و آسمان ها خدای دیگری می بود نظام کائنات به هم می خورد و فساد روی می داد معاد یعنی ایمان و تصدیق به بازگشت به سوی خدا و خداوند و زنده شدن پس از مرگ و کیفر و پاداش تمام گفته ها و اعماله های خوب و بد که در حیات دنیا انجام داده ما یلفظ من قول الا لديه رقیب عتید من یعمل فمن یعمل مثقال ذرة خیرا یره و من یعمل مثقال ذرة شرا یره رسالت یعنی ایمان و تصدیق به همه انبیاء که از طرف خداوند برای هدایت بشر فرستاده شدند قرآن شش هزار و شش صد و شست و شش آیه است که مشتمل هستند بر قصص و احکام و توحید و رسالت و معاد و آیات آفاقی و انفسی و عبرت و اندرز و نصایح و طریق تسکیه نفس و راهنمایی جهت مکارم اخلاق و من قسمتی را که مربوط به سمیمیت و محبت بین برادران دینی و تسکیه نفس است و سمع حزار و عزیزان گرامی می رسانم کونو عباد الله اخوانا ای عباد خدا برادری و محبت و خیرخواهی برای یک دیگر داشته باشید ولا تکونو من الذین فرقو دینهم و کانو شیعا شما ای مسلمانان مثل آنها نباشید که در دین خود گروه گروه و دست دسته شدند و اختلاف پیدا کردند و یک دیگر را تکفیر نمودند و در نتیجه شوکت و قوت و وحدت از دست دادند یا ایوه الناس انا خلقناکم من ذکر و انثا ای مردم ما شما را نخست از مرد و زن آفریدیم و جعلناکم شعوبا و قبائل لتعارفو آنگا شعبه های بسیار و فرقه های جدا جدا و مختلف گردانی دیم 
تا قرب و بعد نجادی یک دیگر را بشناسید نه اینکه به واسطه نصب بر سر هم دیگر مباهات و فخر کنید و دل یک دیگر را بشکنید و بدانید که اصل و نصب نجادی مایه افتخار نیست و بلکه ان اکرمکم عند الله اتقاکم بزرگوار ترین و با افتخار ترین شما نزد خداوند با تقوا ترین مردمند برادران محترم در قرآن مجید مراتب نفس بشر به این ترتیب ذکر شده اول نفس اماره و ما ابرئ نفسی ان النفس لاماره بالسوء و من خود ستایی نکرده و نفس خویش را از عیب و تقصیر مبرا نمیدانم زیرا نفس اماره انسان را به کارهای زشت و ناروا سخت و میدارد دوم نفس لوامه لا اقسم بیوم القیامتی قسم به روز قیامت و لا اقسم به نفس لوامه و قسم به نفس پرحسرت و ملامت یعنی نفس انسان که خود را ملامت می کند و اصفناک می شود که چرا مرتکب جرم شده و معصیت نموده سوم نفس مطمئنه یا ایتها النفس المطمئنه ترجعی الى ربك راضية مرلية فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي اي نفسي باوك قدسي ودلارام وبياد خدا امروز بحضور پروردگارت بازاي كتو خشنود بنعمتهاي ابدية او و او راضي از اعمال نيكي توست بازاي ودرسف بندگان خاص من دراي وبا خشنودي در بهشت رلوان من داخل شو صدر اول اسلام تابعین علماء عباد زهاد سلحا به این سه مرحله و مراتب صفات نفسی که کلام مجید به آنها اشاره کرده توجه خاص داشتند و از راه تبعیت و متخلق شدن به اخلاق حضرت محمد صلی الله علیه و سلم به مجاهده و تزکیهش پرداختن قد افلح من تزکا و ذکر اسم ربهی فصلا و قد افلح من زکاها و قد خواب من دساها در خلوت و انجمن و سفر و حضر نصب العین قرار دادن و دائم مواظب سرکشی نفس خود بودن اهل آن وقت این فرقه و جماعت از مسلمین را صوفیه نام نهادن چون به تبعیت از حضرت رسول صلی الله علیه و سلم به لزائز جسمی و تنپروری اعتناوی نمی کردن و صفا و نور قلب و ذکر و یاد, یاد و معرفت خدا را بر همه چیز ترجیح می دادن و به نور بصیرت حقارت و تلودات به ثبات و فنای دنیا را می دیدن و احقاق حق و اجرای اوامر الهی و عدالت اجتماعی را بر ملت اسلام خواستار بودن و با ظلم و استبداد و فساد و زورگویی و فردی و جهل و ماد پرستی و عیاشی در کشور, در کشور اسلام کما اینکه حالا از حکام کشورهای اسلامی می بینیم مخالف بودند حکام فاسد و ظلمه آن وقت و علماء جامد و قشری و بی بصیرت و بی بصیرت دنیا پرست بسیار آنها را به نام بدعت در دین مورد حمله و آزار قرار دادن در صورت که تمام حرکات و سکنات و گفتار و عبادات آنان مطابق سنن و آداب سنیه حضرت رسول صلی الله علیه و سلم بود بدیهیست که نور و ظلمت علم و جهل عفت و فساد و عدل و ظلم با هم کنار نمی آیند و سازش ندارند و زد یک دیگرند اعتراضات و مخالفت صحابه جلیل القدر و زاهد و محبوب حضرت رسول صلی الله علیه و سلم ابو ذر غفاری زمان خلافت زن نورین حضرت عثمان رضی الله عنهما به تشکیلات سلطنت 
حضرت معاویه کی مخالف زمان حضرت رسول و شیخین ابو بکر و عمر بود در تاریخ ثبت و مشهور است بالاخر به مفاد الحق یعلو ولا یعلا علیه ان شاء الله تا دم سور اسرافیل آن نور در قلب جماعت از خواص امت حضرت سید المرسلین پایدار می ماند فرموده حضرت رسول اعظم صلی الله علیه و سلم لا تزال طائفة من امتی ظاهرین على الحق حتى یعتی امر الله مؤید آن است که تفکرانی که به زعم باطل خود تصوف را بدعت در دین می دانند بسیار در اشتباهند و غلط و ظالمانه در این مورد قضاوت می کنند چون نص کلام الله مجید در مورد این نوع اشخاص و این عبارت مدح می فرماید رجال لا تلهیهم تجارت ولا بیع عن ذکر الله و اقام الصلاة و ایتاء الزكاة يخافون يوما تتقلب فيه القلوب والأبصار ليجزيهم الله أحسن ما عملوا ويزيدهم من فله والله يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب باك مردانه كي هيج كسب تجارته آنهارا أزياد خدا غافل نگرداند ونماز بفا داشته و زكاة بفقيران ميدان و از روزی که دل و دیده ها دران حیران و ملترب است ترسان و حراسانند تا خدا در مقابل بهترین اعمال ایشان که خلوص قلب و خوف خدا و معرفت اوست جزا و ثواب کامل عطا فرماید و از فضل و احسان خویش بر آنها بیفزاید و خدا هر کسی را خواهد روزی به حد و حساب بخشد الا لله الدين الخالص دين نزد خدا مقبول است از شائبه هوا و هوس و ریا و دور و عبودیت خالص برای خدا باشد فدع الله مخلصین له الدين دين و عبادت خدا نباید آلت و وسیله جمع حطام دنیا و بدست آوردن جاه و مقام و نفوذ دنیوی بین الناس قرار گیرد ان ربك لبالمرصاد خدای تو در تمنگاه ناظر گفته ها و اعمال شماست انهو علیم بذات الصدور به درستی خداوند بر خطرات قلبی که در سینه است دانه است برادران فرمایش خلیفه دوم حضرت عمر ابن الخطاب است که فرمودند نحن قوم اعزن الله بالاسلامی فمهما نبتغي العزة بغير ما أعزنا الله أذلنا الله ما قوم بودم زليل خار كي خداوان در ساوي إسلام ما را از پستي و زبوني نجاد داد و بأوج قدرت و عزة رسانيد و اگر بخواهم از راه دیگر غير از إسلام طالب نفوز و عزة باشيم خداوان ما را زليل خار خواهد کرد واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا قرآن دستاويز ريسما ونبسيار محكم است بين ما وعنوات خداوان كباويد محكم بآن دست بگيريم دست گرفتن بقرآن يعني اعتقاد و ايمان كامل بأحكام و دستورات فرمز و عالية آن راه نجات أمة حضرة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وحدت و أخوت و محبت و همکاری و اخلاص در عمل برای یک دیگر و اجتناب و دوری از غرور و خودخواهی و تفرقه و حب تفوق فردی و حضر از پیروی های نفس اماره است که خدا فرموده این نفس الاماره بسو جهاد اکبر جهاد با نفس است قد أفلح من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها آن کس رستگار شد که نفس خود را از تلوسات و صفات پلید پاکی زکرد و رجایش منعکیس است آن که نفس خود را و معصیت و کردار بد آلوده و دوچار کرد ولا تکونو من الذین فرقو دینهم و کانو شیعا کل حزب بما لديهم فرحون مثل 
شما مثل آنها نباشید که در دین توحید توحید الهی انحراف ورزیدن و دست دست شدن و هر یک از آن فرقه ها و اوهام و خیالات واهی که نزد خود داشتند مسرور و شادمان بودند و میدوار من نیروی ظاهری و معنبی از عقل و علم و قدرت و سائر مواهب طبیعت که خداون به ما بخشیده در راه خدمت به دین اسلام و کوبیدن دشمنان خدا و رسول به کار بریم نی به مخالفت و جدال و سب و نفرین یک دیگر عنایت از خدا می خواهیم و ما توفیق الا بالله علیه توکلت و الیه انیب ان تنصر الله ينصركم و یثبت اقدامكم ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا و اصرافنا فی امرنا و ثبت اقدامنا و انصرنا على القوم الكافرين عالم الغيب لا يعزب عنه مثقال ذرة في السماوات ولا في الأرض ولا أصغر من ذلك ولا أكبر إلا في كتاب مبين خداون بهم أي مغيبات وبنهاني داناست وزن يك ذرة در آسمانها وزمين أزو بنهان نيست الذرة كوشك كوشكتر وبزركتر همعش در علم خدا ولوح محفوظ سبت مكشوف است ضروری است برادران دینی ذات و نفس خود را در برابر خداوند و عباد او با کمال هوشیاری همه وقت مواظب و مراقب باشند از صدق مع الحق و الخلق مع الخلق راستی با خدا در دین او و خلق و درستکاری و مهربانی با عبادش ولا يصدنكم الشيطان انه لكم عدو مبين يا أيها الناس إن وعد الله حق ولا يغرنكم بالله الغرور إن الشيطان لكم عدو مبين فاتخذوه عدوا إنه إنما يدعو حزبه ليكونوا من أصحاب السعير نس كلام قديم اللهم أعنا على دوام ذكرك وفكرك وحسن عبادتك وتوفيق طاعتك وشكر نعمتك رب زدنا رب زدني علما والحقنا رب زدنا علما والحقنا بالصالحين اللهم انا اسالك ثواب الشاكرين ونزل المقربين ومرافقه النبيين ويقين الصديقين وذله المتق وذله المتق وذله المتقين واخبات الموقنين حتى توفاني على ذلك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إني أعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشع ودعاء لا يسمع ونفس لا تشبع اللهم أغنني بالعلم وزيني بالحلم وأكرمني بالتقوى وجملني بالعافية اللهم اغفر لي وارحمني وألحقني بالرفيق الأعلى سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ومولانا وشفيع ذنوبنا محمد وآله الطاهرين المعصومين جگرات 
ਤਾਜ ਕੋ ਤਾਜ ਤੋਰੇ ਸਰ ਸੋਹੇ ਜਗ ਰਾਜ ਕੋ ਤਾਜ ਤੋਰੇ ਸਰ ਸੋਹੇ ਤੁਝ ਕੋ ਸ਼ਹੀਦ ਸਰਾਜਾਨਾ ਹਰੁ ਅਲਾ ਵਲ ਮਾ ਜੋ ਤਗਾ ਮਨ ਬੇਕਸ ਤੂਫਾ ਹੋਸ਼ ਰੂਬਾ ਮਨ ਬੇਕਸ ਤੂਫਾ ਹੋਸ਼ ਰੂਬਾ ਮਜਧਾਰ ਮੇ ਹੂੰ ਬਿਗੜੀ ਹੈ ਹਵਾ ਮੋਰੀ ਨਈਆ ਪਾਰ ਲਗਾ ਜਾਣਾ ਮਜਧਾਰ ਮੇ ਰਸੂਲ ਅੱਲਾ ਮੰਜਦਾਰ ਮੈਂ ਹੂੰ ਯਾ ਹਬ ਅਨਫੀਆ ਤਾਸ਼ਿਉ ਵਾ ਸਖਾ ਸਭ ਪੇ ਗੇਰਾ ਜਾਣਾ ਦੋ ਬੂੰਦ ਇਧਰ ਬੇ ਗੇਰਾ ਜਾਣਾ ਬਸ ਖਾਮਾਏ ਖਾਮ ਰਾਹ ਪੜਾ ਜਾਣਾ ਜਗ ਰਾਜ ਕੋ ਤਾਜ ਤੋਰੇ ਸਰ ਸੋਹੇ ਤੁਝ ਕੋ ਸ਼ਹੀਦੋ ਸਰਾ ਜਾਣਾ translate uh from my translation of Sheikh Masoom's talk if there's anything that's unclear uh please see me or see the son of of the Sheikh uh, Jafar after the talk and we will clarify it for you Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim All praise is due to God who is sufficient unto himself and infinitely generous 
It is God who has expanded the hearts of the scholars who strive to travel the straight path. Through them, he has illuminated the avenues to salvation. And may blessings and peace be upon our master, Muhammad, the sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the seal of the prophets and the master of the divine messengers. I'm grateful to God for his unlimited bounties and I affirm that there is no God but God. La ilaha illallah. He is one, there being none beside him. And I affirm that Muhammad is his servant and messenger. May God send blessings and peace upon him, his entire family, upon his brothers, the prophets, and upon the rest of the righteous people. We are grateful to God and thank him for endowing us and all who attend this gathering and all who are attending this gathering with another opportunity to celebrate the splendorous festival of the birthday of the seal of the prophets, Muhammad, the one chosen by God, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I hope that at all times in this world and in the hereafter, we will be able to partake of and benefit from the spiritual blessings and brilliant light of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam since the divine benevolence is continually radiating for the sake of seekers of the way to God, the ultimate reality and truth. We are informed by a hadith Qudsi that God in speaking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has declared, were it not for you, were it not for you, I would not have created the universe. In addition, with the following words, a poet has sung of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has sung of the Prophet's greatness, his love and his closeness to God. No one remains caught in rebelliousness to God who has such a master as a leader. Hence, God willing, all those who have worked hard and taken pains to make this festival a reality will receive divine compensation, each according to his or her own state, love, and desire. My dear friends, the greatest gift with which God endowed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the Qur'an, which is continuous, which is a continuous and constant miracle available to all. Reciting and contemplating the words of this gift of salvation and acting in accordance with it, which is the most important thing that one can do, must be viewed with complete seriousness. First, in reciting the Qur'an, in reciting the Qur'an to the degree that it is possible, one must try to completely and correctly pronounce its letters, words, and expressions. Since its miraculousness rests in the structure of its words and composition of its sentences. Second, contemplating the meaning of its words and sentences is also of great significance. Yet the third point concerning one's relationship to the Qur'an is of utmost importance, namely, one must act in accordance with the Qur'an. It is not sufficient to simply pronounce the words and understand their meanings. One must carry out the instructions of the Qur'an, fulfill its commands, and refrain from its prohibitions. Concerning the content of the Qur'an, the three most significant objects of faith are first, the affirmation of unity, tawheed, second, the return to God, ma'ad, and third, prophethood, risala. Affirming unity, tawheed, consists of faith in one's heart that there is nothing worthy of worship but God, the real al-haq, and that one should not ascribe the one God's essence, attributes, and actions to anyone but God. 
In the totality of the affairs of all created beings, this is the meaning of La ilaha illallah. As God states in Surah Al-Anbiya, Ayah 22, had there been in heaven or on earth any deities other than God, both those realms would surely have fallen into ruin. The return of God, Ma'ad, or Ma'ad, consists of affirming faith in the return of humankind to God and faith in their revival after death, as well as affirming faith in their receiving just compensation for all their words and deeds, whether good or evil, all their words and deeds that they enacted during their life in this world. As God states in Qaf, Ayah 18, not even a word can he utter without there being a watcher with him ever present. And also in Surat, Azal, in Surat Zalzala, Ayah 7 through 8, Whoever does an atom's worth of good shall see it, and whoever does an atom's worth of evil shall see it. Belief in prophethood consists of affirming faith in all the prophets that have been sent by God to guide humankind. The Quran consists of 6,666 verses that comprise stories, injunctions, affirmations of God's unity, tawheed, prophethood and the return, ma'ad, verses dealing with the macrocosm, afaqi, and microcosm, and fusi, verses that advise and counsel, verses that show the way of purifying the self, tazkiyah and nafs, and verses that guide people toward transforming their behavior, verses that guide people to transforming their behavior into noble actions, makarim al-akhlaq. I will now discuss matters related to heartfelt closeness and love, samimiyat and mahabbat. Heartfelt closeness and love among one's fellow believers. And I will also speak of purifying the nafs. In a sound hadith related by both Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam declared, Be servants of God. Be servants and brothers. Be servants of God and be brothers. And God declared in Surat Ar-Rum, Ayah 31 and 32, and do not be among those who worship others besides God, those who have broken the unity of their faith and have become sects. In other words, do not be like those who found differences among their brethren and called one another unbelievers. Do not be like those who found differences among their brethren and called one another unbelievers, and as a result, lost their grandeur, lost their strength, lost their unity. Also, we hear Allah Ta'ala in Surat Al-Hujarat, Ayah 13, stating, O humankind, we created you all from a male and a female and have made you into nations and tribes so that you might come to know one another, so that you might come to know one another. That is to say, not so that you can boast about or claim the superiority of your lineage and make one another feel bad. You should know that one's racial origin and lineage are nothing to be proud of. As God also in Surat Al-Hujurat, Ayah 13 says, the noblest of you, from God's perspective, are the most conscious of God. O oh, my honorable brethren, 
in the glorious Quran, the degrees of the human self are described in the following manner. The first degree of the self is the compelling self, a nafs al-ammara, which God refers to in the following words of Yusuf in the Quran. And I quote, And I am not trying to absolve myself. Indeed, man's self does incite him to evil. The second degree of the self is the blaming self, an nafs al lawama And I quote the Surah Al-Qiyamah, ayah, the first and second ayahs, I call to witness the day of resurrection. I call to witness the blaming self. This verse indicates that the human self will ask itself why it has committed crimes, why it has displayed rebelliousness to Allah. The third degree of the self is the self at peace, a nafs al mutma'inna. As God states in the Quran, O self at peace, return to your sustainer, he being content with you and you being content with him. Enter among my servants, enter, enter my paradise. The first generations of Muslims, including the generation following the companions, the scholars, the servants of God in general, the ascetics, the zuhad, and the righteous, they all paid particular attention to these three degrees and stages of the qualities of the self of which the glorious Quran speaks. By striving to model their behavior after the example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam by striving to model their behavior after the example of the prophet and by assimilating his character into their own they engaged in the purification of their selves by the way for those of you who have just come in i'm translating sheikh masum's speech by striving to model their behavior after the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and assimilating his character into their own, these first generations engaged in purifying their selves. In the words of the glorious Quran in Surah Al A'la, Ayah 14 to 15, those who achieve salvation will be those who have become purified who remember the name of their sustainer and who pray. And also in Surat Ashams, Ayah 9 through 10, Allah declares, those who, have, those who attain salvation will be the ones who purify themselves, and those who become lost will be the ones who do nothing with their selves. While in private or in public, while traveling or at home. These early generations of Muslims who were careful to model their behavior after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, these early generations of Muslims were watchful of their selves, continually restraining the rebelliousness of their selves. The people of those times called these Muslims Sufis. In following the example of the Prophet وسلم, they were not devoted to physical pleasures, were not devoted to idolizing their bodies, and they preferred over everything the purity and light of the heart, as well as the remembrance and knowledge of God, Ma'rifah. In addition, by the light of their spiritual vision, they saw what little value lay in all of the unstable and transient vicissitudes of the world. 
and they called for the fulfillment of human obligations to Allah. They called for the fulfillment of human obligations to Allah Ta'ala. The putting into practice of the divine commands and they called for the implementation of social justice for the community of Islam. Also they were opposed to the decadence of the Muslim world, namely the oppression, the tyranny, the corruption, the lack of self-restraint among individuals, the ignorance, materialism, and debauchery, circumstances that are now common among rulers in Muslim countries. The corrupt and oppressive elites of those times, along with the world-worshipping superficial scholars whose hearts were hardened and without vision, these oppressive elites and scholars harassed and attacked many Sufis, justifying their attacks on the basis that they were rooting out innovation in religion, that they were eliminating bid'ah. The truth of the matter is that all of the behavior, actions, and words of these Sufis were in accord with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were in accord with the Sunnah of the Prophet, harmonious with his way of being. It is obvious that there can be no coexistence of the opposites of light and darkness, knowledge and ignorance, innocence and corruption, and justice and oppression. One must take note of the criticisms and oppositions voiced against Muawiyah by the exalted ascetic and beloved companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Dhar al-Ghaffari radiallahu anhu. During the time of the Caliphate of Uthman radiallahu anhu, Abu Dhar was critical of the establishment of the monarchy of Muawiyah an institution that was counter to what had been established by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the first two caliphs, Abu Bakr and Omar. His opposition was recorded in works of history and is well known. In the end, we come back to a basic fact. The truth, al-haq, is superior and is never inferior. God willing until the blast of Gabriel's trumpet signaling the beginning of the resurrection that that light will firmly remain in the heart of a group of the elect of the people of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Confirming this is the Sahih Hadith that records the Prophet that records that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam declared there will always be a group of my community who will be victorious on the path of truth until the divine command manifests at the end of time. Those lesser minds who with their false conjectures consider Sufism to be bid'ah, consider Sufism to be innovation in religion are grossly mistaken. Their mistaken and oppressive judgment goes against God's praise of the Sufis in the Qur'an in Surah An-Nur, Ayah 37 through 38. They are a people whom neither worldly commerce nor striving after gain can distract from the remembrance of Allah. From performing prayers, giving zakat, they are people who are filled with at the thought of the day on which all hearts and eyes will be convulsed and who only hope that God may reward them in accordance with the best that they ever did and will give them out of his bounty more than they deserve for God grants sustenance unto whom he will beyond all reckoning sustenance beyond all reckoning God in the Qur'an, Surah Az-Zumar, Ayah 3 says, You should know that God alone possesses true religion, 
namely religion that is devoid of defects of personal desires and hypocrisy entailing worship alone for God's sake. And just prior to this, Allah Ta'ala in Surah Az-Zumar, Ayah 2, states, So call upon God, sincere in your faith in Him alone. In other words, religion and worship of God should not be a means for gathering up the goods of the world and for attaining worldly positions. In Surat Al-Fajr, Ayah 14, Allah Ta'ala declares, Indeed, your sustainer is ever watchful. That is to say that God is aware of your actions. And in Surat Al-Hud, Ayah 5, Allah Ta'ala refers to himself and states, Indeed, he is aware of what is in people's hearts. Indeed, he is aware of what is in people's hearts. My dear brothers and sisters, heed these words of the second caliph, Omar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an. We are a people whom God has exalted through Islam. We are a people whom God has exalted through Islam. So however much we desire to be exalted beyond which God has exalted us, God humbles us. So however much we desire to be exalted beyond which God has exalted us, God humbles us. Thus as God declares in Surah Al-Imran, Ayah 103, Hold fast all together unto the bond with Allah. That is to say, cling to the Qur'an. It is a firm rope between us and God's grace. So we must firmly hold on to it. And holding on to the Qur'an consists of having faith, adhering to the commands, and putting into practice its exalted and wise instructions. The way to salvation for the Muslim community, the community of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the way to salvation for the Muslim community is unity, fraternity, love, cooperation, and sincerity in what one does for one another. On the one hand, and on the other, avoiding pride, self-centeredness, disgust, disgust of others, love of self, and, and avoiding also love of self-exaltation. I'll repeat. The way to salvation for the Muslim community, the community of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is unity, fraternity, love, cooperation, and sincerity in, one, what, in what one does for one another on the one hand and avoiding pride, self-centeredness, mutual disgust, scatteredness, love of self-exaltation on the other. One must beware of following the compelling self. One must beware of following the nafs al-ammara. Since, as Allah Ta'ala has declared, indeed, the self compels one to evil. Thus, the greater struggle, the jihad -e akbar even more significant than fighting one's enemies in the world is the struggle with one's own self. And as God states in the Quran, one who purifies the self will achieve salvation while one who does nothing with it will be lost. In other words, one who purifies himself of his unworthy lower qualities will become saved, while one whose self is sullied and polluted will have no hope. God in the Quran has stated in Surah Ar-Rum, 
Isaiah 31 through 32. And do not be among those who worship others besides God, those who have broken the unity of their faith and have become sects, each group delighting in what they themselves believe. I hope that we can put to good use our God-given outer and inner powers in the form of our intelligence, knowledge, and strength, as well as the remainder of our God-given natural gifts. I hope that we can put these to use in the way of service to the religion of Islam and in defeating the adversaries of God and the Prophet wasallam, not for bringing about opposition, argument, and mutual disgust. And we seek God's grace in accordance with his words in the following four ayat. In Surah Hud, ayah 88, no success can I obtain except through God. In him do I trust, and to him do I turn. And also in Surah Muhammad, ayah 7, if you assist God, he will assist you and affirm your steps. In Surat Al-Imran, Ayah 147, O oh, our sustainer, forgive us our sins and our lack of moderation in our doings, and make firm our steps, and succor us against people who deny the truth. Help us against people who deny the truth. And finally, in Surat Sabah, Ayah 3, by him who knows the unmanifest, the ghaib, not an atom's weight of whatever there is in the heavens or on earth escapes his knowledge. Not an atom's worth of whatever there is on heaven, on the heavens or on earth escape, escapes his knowledge. And neither is there anything smaller than that or larger, but it is recorded in God's clear decree. In other words, God knows everything that is unmanifest. God knows everything that is hidden. Everything is preserved and unveiled in God's knowledge and on the hidden tablet, on the preserved tablet, Allah al-Mahfuz. At all times in the presence of God and his worshipers, it is necessary for travelers on the spiritual path to be aware of and observe one's person and oneself with total sobriety. As the Arabic saying goes, be sincere with God and comport yourself correctly with people. Be sincere with God and comport yourself correctly with people. Here, correct comportment consists of upright and kind acts, kind acts. And finally, one must keep in mind the following two ayat, Surat Zukhruf, Ayah 62. Do not let Satan hinder you. Indeed, he is an outright enemy of yours. And Surat Al-Fatir, Ayah 5, O humankind, indeed God's promise is true, so do not let the life of the world delude you. Do not let the life of the world delude you, and do not let your deceptive thoughts of God delude you. Do not let your deceptive thoughts of God delude you. Behold, Satan is an outright enemy of yours, so treat him as an enemy. He only calls on his followers so that they might be among those who are destined for the blazing flames. And Sheikh Ma'asum concluded his talk with the following dua. O oh God, help us to continually remember you, to contemplate you, to refine our worship of you, to be graced by obedience to you, and to be grateful 
for your bounties. O Lord, increase my knowledge, increase me in knowledge, admit me among the righteous. O God, I seek from you the reward of those who are thankful, the grace of those drawn near, the company of the prophets, the certainty of those who have verified the truth, the self-abasement of the God-conscious, and the humility of those who have certainty. I seek these until you cause me to pass away with these qualities. O supremely merciful Lord, O God, I seek refuge from useless knowledge, from a heart that does not fear, from a prayer that is not heard, from a self that is not satiated. Amen. O God, endow me with the wealth of knowledge. Adorn me with forbearance. Bestow upon me God consciousness and beautify me with well-being. O God, forgive me and have mercy on me and admit me into the highest paradise. Transcendent is your sustainer, the sustainer of exaltedness, transcending whatever descriptions people make of him. And peace be upon God's messenger, and all gratitude is due to God, the sustainer of all worlds. And may the blessings of God be upon our master, our leader, and our intercessor, Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his pure and untainted family. Ameen. This has been the speech of Sheikh Diai Naqshbandi Muhammad Maasum.